thank you. Oh, oh, fish, fish, fish. Ooh, I'm drinking coffee over here. Oh, don't kick your coffee over. Don't kick your coffee over. Don't spill your coffee. Your foot is right next to it. What do you think we got, Liz? Uh, I think it's a trigger. You think it's a trigger? It's feel it's 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 going straight down like a trigger. Yeah, it's a trigger. Nice. Okay, bring him up. Bring him up. Ah, don't get this lure, man. This lure really gets these guys going. Okay, so let's go ahead and let him go. Good luck on your journey. All right, nice work. Decent size. Decent, that was actually a decent trigger. Don't kick, don't knock your coffee Dude, over. You're very, you're being a little with the coffee. Yeah, well, I did it last night myself, and you would be sad. I would. I would go back to camp. You would go back to camp, exactly. <laughs> I'm preserving my my happiness here. You would lose your engine. <laughs> Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak. Once again, we are out on the water in beautiful Baja, Mexico, testing out the new pedal drive canoe system. If you don't know what that is, check out the video up on the screen right now. That's going to take you to a video that shows you all about the purpose and the evolution of this particular watercraft. And if you don't know who I am, once again, my name is Brian. I've been teaching skin on frame boat building for over 20 years. I offer online video courses and plans for how to do this type of construction. So anyways, uh, we are down here just trying to put as many possible miles on this boat so I can learn things that I can apply to the next stage in the design evolution. And while we're doing that, we're doing as much fishing as we can because as long as you're on the water, you might as well be fishing. So right now we are fishing about half way between Laredo and La Paz. Uh, pretty much exact same conditions as yesterday morning in the exact same location. Uh, weather for today is supposed to be cloudy. Winds are light and variable. And I think we might take a chance and go a little bit further offshore than normal. I'm usually pretty cautious about that down here because the winds can come up dramatically even if they haven't been forecast. But usually with this particular weather pattern, I don't see that being a problem. Okay, so which side I fish with, guys? You know, I'm just gonna go straight for my favorite because this lure is one fish catching SOB. All right. I want to know what those guys out there are doing. There's a fishing boat on the horizon here. I wonder if they're pulling up yellowtail or what. Oh, fish, fish. Oh, whoa. Here, take the camera. I thought that was your phone going in the water. Okay, I got a fish. Here, you oh. should reel up. Wait, don't take the camera. Give me the camera back. <laughs> you, you, you reel up your pole. I'll take the camera. Oh, oh I got you, a fish. you got a fish too? Okay, so reel, reel, reel. Real, real, real. Hopefully our fishes don't cross. You don't want to cross the streams. Cross the streams. Or maybe I we'll get... I think I might have shook them. Yeah, I shook them. Oh, you shook them? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's probably good for right now. Okay, let's see what I got. It's not big, but it's feisty. So let's see who we got here. All right, he's coming in easy. That doesn't mean he's not good, though. Let's see what we got. Yep, he's coming in pretty easy. wonder what it is. It's got a little bit of tug on it, even though it is coming in easy. Ooh, it's a, uh, what, we, what is it? Leopard grouper. grouper. Okay, cool. A lot of people really like to eat this particular fish. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it tastes like much. Kind of like most rockfish, it just tastes like whatever you cook it with. So we're gonna go ahead and let him go. All right, good luck, bud. Whoa! Is it in your knee? Okay, good. You've got the barbless hook in your knee. Okay, you, how deep is it? Okay, so this just happened. Liz went for casting and ended up catching my lure and it went into her knee. So, that's deep. That doesn't look good. Okay, so I'm gonna let you try to work it and if you can't, I'm gonna get the pliers and we're just gonna pull it out. Okay, so thank God we were using barbless hooks because I can tell you from personal experience, if not, 
we would have had to actually take this off the lure, take it home, cut it, and then force it all the rest of the way through. And so, like I've said a million times on this channel, I'm a huge fan of barbless hooks. I don't feel like I lose that many fish. And once in a while, you actually do end up hooking yourself, and it's a heck of a lot easier to get it out if you're going barbless. Seriously though, you should invest in some glasses. Like, people wear special fishing glasses just with like, yellow coating so they can see the fish better. I've thought about it. I've thought about special glasses just for hanging out with you. <laughs> glasses that make me look better? <laughs> <laughs> really dark sunglasses <laughs> with a picture of an attractive man in the middle. <laughs> 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 what? I said I got my bait for the day. Do it. Put it on a hook. Maybe they'll bite it. I'm gonna catch an elf. Gummy worms. Medically certified to help you recover from hook trauma. And I'm just gonna let it sink. Alright, there's the bottom. Oh, I forgot I need to change out my leader. Okay, I'm actually gonna do that here in a sec. Let's pull this up. So I've got some 40 pound Daiwa fluorocarbon leader. I like 40 pound because it's not so thick that it's hard to tie knots, but it is fairly resistant to being cut and bit through unless you hook into a Sierra, in which case they'll just go through this like butter. So anyways, cut off a little bit of this. I'm not going to tie it on camera because you're not going to be able to see it. So fishing is definitely a bit slow right now, but we're going to keep at it. I think we're going to switch out our metal jigs for these plastic gummies here. I think that looks good. I would bite that. Nice thing about this kind of jig, you don't really have to work it quite the same way. You just kind of let it sink, pull it back, let it fall, and then give it a little bit of a variable action with the crank. Sometimes I'll just do it kind of random, make it look kind of like a little fish in distress. All right, still no fish. I think we're gonna head home. Liz is gonna troll the big rattly Rapala thing. I'm gonna keep at it with my favorite metal jig. Hopefully we can still hook up. I'm not giving up yet. Oh, whoa, fish, fish, fish. Okay, actually a decent fish. Right, so, we'll see what we got here. Oh, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? Sierra, oh, Sierra, I got a Sierra, I got a Sierra, I got a Sierra. Rad. Okay, okay, watch out for the teeth when it comes in the boat. I gotta get this thing in before it's, whoa. okay. Hey, bud. Sorry, okay. sorry, okay. okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you in the face with a dangerous fish. fish? Okay. okay. It's right. just, I are knew we, it was going to come off and it did. Are we, are we just okay. cleaning it out or are we... Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to kill it. Um, okay. All right, we finally caught a fish and not just any fish, but a Sierra, otherwise known as a Spanish mackerel. I thought I'd caught that whole thing on my chest camera here, but apparently it's just on the back camera. The reason we were so frantic is one, I knew it was about to come off the hook, so I had to get it in the boat, but two, these teeth in here are razor sharp and so you want to be really careful because if you get your fingers or any other part of your body around this mouth it's going to cut you up badly so long story short we got it in the boat it died a pretty quick death and i am very grateful for this because this is one of the best eating fish in the sea of cortez it's also a beautiful fish so now we can go ahead and pedal home and i'm going to give you guys another quick cooking lesson i'm going to show you how to fillet the sierra and then we're going to turn it into ceviche 
All right, so fair warning, the rest of this video is gonna be focused on cleaning and cooking this fish. So if you're not interested in that, feel free to check out now. Just do me a favor and drop me a like before you go. But for those of you who are interested in watching me dismantle this beautiful fish and turn it into ceviche, as long as we're just heading home right now on the water, I'm just gonna take a moment and take out the guts. Now, for most of the fish I catch, I don't actually gut them first. I fillet them around the gut sack, but there is so much meat on the side of the Sierra that in this case, we are going to remove the guts and then that'll give us even more meat on our fillet. So I'm just gonna take my pocket knife here and go right down the belly of the fish. We're just gonna open it up just like you would any other fish if you're cutting the guts out. And then there's no real science to this. You just open it up and get in here. And if it looks like guts, you're just gonna scrape it out with your fingers. Sometimes it helps to kind of get into the front with a knife and just kind of cut everything. There we go. But if you're gonna cut in here, try not to cut into the meat because you don't wanna contaminate the meat with the guts. So now that I've got the guts out, just like if you were filleting a salmon or something like that, I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna cut this dark line right here and that's the blood line. So we're gonna get that out of there. I'm washing out the cavity here, get it nice and clean. Okay, so that looks pretty good and that's all we're gonna do here on the water. And then when we get back to camp, I'm gonna take the fillets off the sides of this. All right. All right. Ride's over. Not fish for you. I caught fish. I caught this beautiful Sierra. You guys saw it, we have proof. Back on the hard. Watch out. Okay, just one more look at my Sierra because it's so awesome. Okay, let's go fillet this fish and make some ceviche. So you can see what we did earlier. We got the guts out and we cleaned out the cavity. And nice thing about Sierra is unlike so many of the fish down here, they just cut like butter. So I'm gonna make that kind of standard diagonal cut that you make on all fish behind the head like that. Sweet. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it around and I'm just gonna come right down the spine and I'm just gonna come right through. And because Sierra is so soft, you should be able to just use the spine as your cutting guide as you work your way down the side of the fish. This is one of my favorite fish to fillet because it's just so darn easy. And then as always, I'm gonna leave just a little skin tag at the back here because if we do that, We can open up the fish like this. You wanna put the filet as close as possible to the edge of the cutting board. And then you can cut down here and you can just slide your knife between the skin and the meat. Now, before I go ahead and clean up any of the last little bits of meat that are on the side of this fish, I'm gonna take a moment, because this is a Sierra, all the bones are gonna be right down the center here. Also, sometimes you'll see a dark line right down the middle that has kind of a fishy taste. So we're just gonna cut that out right now. We're just gonna cut the center line out. We're gonna get rid of all these bones. Okay, and then I've got a little bit of the gut lining right here that I wanna take off. So I'm just really carefully gonna do that. There's a little bit of bones right here as well we wanna get rid of. Okay. All right, and the rest of this is just beautiful sashimi grade 
Sierra or Spanish mackerel, whatever you want to call it. And if you do leave any meat right here, it's not the end of the world. All you got to do is just come in and you can cut that out with the knife. And because this is an excellent sushi fish, and this is definitely sushi grade at this point, if you want to, you can just pop it right in your mouth. Mmm, super good. So you can see there's just nothing left on that fish, and that's exactly what we want. So just throw this to the seagulls. So the first thing I'm going to do for my ceviche is squeeze a half cup of fresh lemon and lime juice. Most people will just use lemons for this, but I like to add a little bit of lime flavor. Before I cut these open, I usually roll them really hard like this. It just helps them to juice a little bit better. Next thing I'm going to do, just slice these in half. And if you happen to have one, a lime squeezer is really useful for this. These plastic ones are garbage. This is just what I happen to have right now. A metal one is gonna work a lot better. If not, you can just squeeze it out by hand. So I'm gonna start by squeezing it into a container. Yeah, this plastic one is crap. I accidentally broke my metal one, so this is what I'm living with right now. And I'm just going to finish squeezing these out by hand because my lime squeezer sucks. Next, we're going to grab about one pound of this beautiful Sierra that we just filleted. And the goal here is we want to cut this into approximately one centimeter square chunks. And you don't have to use Sierra for this, really any good sushi grade fish will work just fine so now that we have about a pound of sushi grade fish cut up into one centimeter cubes i'm just going to go ahead and put all of this into this container right here and we're going to pour this lemon and lime juice mixture on top of it and then we're just going to kind of mix it around a little bit and kind of push it down. Ideally, you want all the fish to be below the surface of the lemon juice. Okay, so I'm going to take this back to the fridge and we're going to let this soak for about two hours. Now, taking a quick look at the rest of the ingredients here, you don't have to memorize all this because I'm going to put the whole recipe in the video description. But just to go through it really quick, I've got three small to medium sized Roma tomatoes. I've got a half a large white onion. You could also use a whole small white onion. If you like your ceviche spicy, you could use a whole serrano chili. If you want it medium spicy, you could use a half a serrano chili. If you don't like it spicy, you could just leave this out. I've also got a medium to large size avocado. If the avocados are really small, you might want to use two of these. And then over here, I've got a little bit of olive oil. I've got a little bit of salt. And something that's not shown here, but should be, is a bunch of cilantro. Ceviche almost always gets a whole bunch of cilantro in it. The reason we don't have it right now is because we're on day six of this particular trip. We ran out of cilantro and we are 100 miles from the nearest grocery store. So just imagine in your mind that we're putting a whole bunch of cilantro in this. So I'm sitting down to edit this video right now and it looks like we're missing a couple steps. So next thing you wanna do is grab the fish out of the fridge and you wanna drain off all of the lemon and lime juice and then you wanna cut your tomatoes up into cubes that are just a little bit smaller than the size of the fish and then you're gonna combine both those things together. All right, sorry about that, let's keep cooking. Next, I'm gonna chop up the onion into fairly small chunks, at least half the size of the pieces of the fish, if not smaller. Then I'm going to chop up this serrano pepper into really, really, really tiny pieces. Remember, after you handle the pepper, wash your hands really well because if you touch your eyes or any other part of your body, you might not be happy. Okay. 
So really easy way to cut an avocado into cubes is just to reach in with a knife and cut it into a grid pattern. I'm cutting these cubes about the same size as the fish and the tomatoes. And then to get these chunks out, instead of reaching all the way down with the spoon, I'm gonna reach halfway down with a spoon like this. And that's gonna make little cubes. And then I get one more scoop all the way down to the skin. And that's my second batch of little cubes. Okay, so at this point is when I would normally add the cilantro. You just wanna get a nice big bunch of cilantro from the store. I would recommend washing it because cilantro is oftentimes grown in sand so it can be really gritty. And then you just wanna chop the cilantro up really fine and then mix it in with all this stuff. Next, I'm gonna grab a teaspoon of salt and you really want this to be a level teaspoon. If you make a heaping teaspoon, it's gonna be way too salty. If you don't like that much salt, you could put in about three quarters of a teaspoon. Okay. And then on top of that, we're gonna put just a little splash of olive oil. I don't have an exact amount for this. Okay. And now we can go ahead and mix it up. And don't be too aggressive with this because the avocado is soft. And if you're using a soft fish like Sierra, that's pretty soft as well. And you don't wanna turn the whole thing into mush. You can see back here, I have cut up a handful of green olives. I'm just gonna spread this stuff around. And then we can just go ahead and mix that up. And so that just kind of pushed this in more of a savory direction. Now, as far as eating this stuff, you can really do whatever you want. You can eat it plain. You can put it on crackers like we are right here. It's just however you want to eat it. Mmm. Super good. I'm gonna finish chewing. All right, so I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for coming along on the adventure with me. Definitely let me know if you like seeing this sort of content where we're out catching fish and then coming back and showing you different ways to cook them. I really enjoy doing it, but it is a lot of extra work. So if people aren't interested, I definitely want to know that. Also, before I go here, I want to give a big thanks to the Mexican cooking channel, Hauka Cocina Mexicana here on YouTube. I started watching her videos it, when I was learning Spanish as a way to keep learning more Spanish. And in the meantime, I actually turned out to be a pretty decent cook. So most of this recipe came directly from her ceviche video. If you speak Spanish, go directly to that channel and watch her cooking videos. So much good food there. If you don't, I might bring a few of them over here just to show you what I've learned. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I know I say that every time, but seriously, hit the like button. It really helps to support channels like mine. Also, if you're interested in the skin on frame boats that you saw me using in this video, check out our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame videos. You can also find us on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post photos and videos of whatever we're building in the shop or whatever we're testing out here on the water. And you can find that same content on the Cape Falcon Kayak Facebook page as well. That's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water, and I will see you next time.